Hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. My name is Leroy and today we're going to go through O Levels Specimen Paper 2021. Paper 1, Question 2, uh, topics around accounting theories and uh, information system, in particular the trial balance. I uh, hope this will be useful for you and uh, if you find that this will be helpful for uh, your friends, please share this with them. This is a free resource and I want this to reach as many people as possible. Uh, if you have any questions uh, on this or anything, if you even have a question paper that you want me to try uh, and share it online with you, uh, just send it to me via this channel or email it to me at poa 4 u at gmail.com. My email address is always on the top left of, this, uh, of the sheets that I work with. Alright, without further ado, let's jump right into this. So we have a trading business, uh, year end 31st December, trial balance, uh, it's balance, great. Now uh, he discovered that uh, there's a credit note of 671 uh, that he sent to Amelia, his customer, and uh, he recorded in his books at 617. So that's a background information. So first question, why trial balance? Why do we prepare that? And that kind of alludes to the benefit of the trial balance, right? Um, the trial balance, especially in the old times where people don't use accounting softwares for these uh, uh, sole proprietor business, right? Uh, is to make sure that when you put together all your different accounts into one page, all the debit nature items equal to all the credit nature items. Because, you know, trial balance is an output coming from so many different journal entries and each journal entry should have a debit that equals to a credit and all the different journal entries will add up and they will be consolidated and sum summed up into what we call a trial balance right so if any of these journal entries their debits are not equals to credits then the trial balance immediately picks up uh, an error in the whole account before you can use it uh, for your statement of financial performance or statement of financial position okay so that's the first um, the first uh, thing that I can think of and nowadays to be honest accounting softwares help you uh, ensure that journal entries are balanced so trial balance are usually balanced oh and, and before I forget you know if uh, Please subscribe to this channel if you guys want a notification on any new content that I'm loading and turn on the notification bell as well. Um, that would be very helpful for an alert on new content. Right? So let, let's go back to uh, part B of this uh, question. What are the limitations of trial balance? So uh, the trial balance tells me that all my accounts balance, right? Debits equals to credit. But does that mean that all the postings have been correctly done? No, it doesn't. Okay, so uh, although these are all balanced, you know, uh, a posting that's incorrect may not be flagged up by the trial balance. And let me uh, actually illustrate to you what I mean, and this will help you understand. So let's, for instance, you pay wages and salaries uh, as a business owner, right? What are the double entries for this? So the journal entries is debit, Wages, yes, and salaries because this is an expense account. Expense is debit in nature. And if you want a, anything that's debit in nature to uh, reflect a higher balance, then you debit it, right? And you credit cash at bank. Okay, cash at bank is an asset, and asset is debit nature. So when you pay wages and salaries, you should reflect a lower asset balance. So you credit it because it's debit in nature and you want to bring the balance down. Now, that's all fine if you did that journal entry like that and if these are the only two accounts in your whole trial balance then your trial balance would be wages and salaries 100 cash at bank uh, minus 100 so to speak right so the debit equals to credit now if you incorrectly posted debit instead of wages and salaries you put rent and you put credit cash at bank then this would be a hundred and a hundred uh, the trial balance was still balanced, but it's not correct because you paid wages and salaries and it reflects here as a rent expense. So although both correct and incorrect journal entries balance ultimately because the debits equals to the credits, uh, and this will flow into the trial balance, on, on, on the surface you can't pick up that this uh, journal entry was actually done cor incorrectly, right? So that's part B. Now part C, um, what is the amount and the effect of the credit note error right, on the profit for the year? So 
let's recap what the background was we had a credit note of 671 that we sent to Amelia and recorded it as 617. So firstly, what's a credit note? Um, a credit note is usually something that uh, we send to customers if you want to lower the amount that they owe you. So for example, if you sold something to them for $100 and say they returned uh, half of what you sold to them, so you would give a credit note of $50 and this would lower, effectively lower the amount that they owe you by $50, okay? Um, so in, in, in this regards, let, let me just uh, call out my format that I prepared here. Oh, it's not here anymore. Okay, never mind. So the credit, let, let's look at what the credit note entry should be, um, okay? Uh, we have the correct entry, and sorry, the incorrect, entry we have the correct entry and we put in the corrections okay so the correct entry for credit note credit note is basically the opposite entry of sales yeah so you debit sales returns okay because the customer returned you something and you credit trade receivables because you uh receivables right sorry this is spelled wrongly receivables um so this would be what is the incorrect entry was 617 okay 617 and the correct entry is 671 671 now so the correction would be the high the correct entry minus the incorrect entry so in this regard you have uh you should have debited sales returns by 671 but you incorrectly debited by 617 and therefore you under debited by 54 and each of these accounts this account belongs to the statement of financial performance and this belongs to the statement of financial position now out of these two statements, which are the, which is the statement that would affect profits, or where you would normally compute profits? It's the statement of financial performance, right? So this will not this entry here, or the correction or incorrection, uh, the incorrect entry will not affect profits. It's only this one, and this will affect profits by the amount fifty four. Now I've put here that profits will be overstated by 54. Now how do I get how do I know that how do how did I derive or conclude that it'll be overstated? So anything that you debit to the statement of financial performance is an expense in nature, right? It reduces profits, right? Because expenses are debit in nature, remember? And anything that you credit to the statement of financial that, that that's credit nature and it goes to the financial statement of financial performance is more of an income. Remember in the uh, the the revenues and income they are credit in nature, and those would naturally bring up profits. And expenses which will reduce your profits are debit in nature. So, going by that principle, if you have debited something that is should be more. But you debited less that means you're understating your expense and if you understate your expense that means your profits will be higher but incorrectly higher so we say it's overstated hope that makes sense if not please send a question to me all right part d uh name and define one ethical principle so there are several ethical principles right you guys uh probably uh, seen this on google or i've learned it but i've called out integrity and that's really to be make sure that you're honest truthful and in you know representing the the accounting information and believe that nothing in the accounting reports are materially misleading because a lot of people rely on those financial reports um, and whether it's business owners, shareholders, uh, governments, suppliers, etc. Um, and you know, sometimes there, there are ways to Google this, right? Because um, if you go into Google, and I'm going to Google, Google now, and I just Googled this, right? let me just Google this, uh, ethical principle accounting, and I'm just going to click on the first one that not, not maybe not this one. I think I've seen good ones on this, right? You may have to go to a few. They have some fundamental 
accounting code of conduct, right? So integrity, objectivity, confidentiality, professional behavior, and stuff like that. So, you know, if you go down to this page 110, um, or rather, no, no, page 10, okay? Uh, page 10, then you start to see that there are different ethical, I may have missed it, where is it? I saw it just now. Uh, there you are. So they are integrity, you know, you should be straightforward, honest, objectivity, you should not be biased, there should not be conflict of interest, um, and, you know, professional duty, you know, whether it's professional knowledge, uh, keeping up to date with the professional uh, regulatory and techniques and stuff like that. Um, so it's a lot of resources on the net that could be helpful for your, you know, understanding of these theory stuff. Okay, going back to the uh question part e what is the accounting theory which must be used when it is assumed a business will continue to operate in the foreseeable future so this is the accounting theory of going concern all right if you don't know what going concern means it's actually assuming when you prepare your financial information it's assuming that the business will continue for the foreseeable future because if the business is assumed to be closing down next year then a lot of stuff will be will, will have to be different right you will have to relook at the value of your fixed assets uh, to see how much you could sell it for instead of how much economic value it, or how much you paid for it for instance or the economic value it can give you so um, I mean there there are several theory stuff that you should be knowing right and if you look at your syllabus, um, actually, if you look at your syllabus outline, so the syllabus outline um, that's uh, that's available on the internet, right? So this is a syllabus outline for seven zero eight seven, um, and these are all the accounting theories that you should know. And sometimes it's good practice to just go through one by one to see whether you can give an elevator speech on each of this. Like going concern assumes that the business will go uh, on uh, in a foreseeable future and um, there are accounting periods where it's not a calendar year but the accounting period is usually a, a financial period uh, ranging from 12 months from it could be starting from March or starting from sorry, April 1st or January 1st. Um, accrual basis of accounting it's you take into account revenues and expense not from uh, the cash you receive but from what you earn or spent right so uh, see whether you can kind of do an elevator speech for each one of this and if not then go google it or look at your textbooks and stuff like that right that will really help okay so that's it for uh, this question hope it's been helpful uh, it's always a pleasure doing this kind of stuff for you guys uh, and if there's any questions kind of write to me via the e uh, my email address or this channel uh, share this with someone and if you like this uh, hit the like button and uh, hope uh, this becomes a helpful resource for you guys all right take care for now